Well, good morning, family. I am glad that you're here with us again on this beautiful Sunday morning. In just a few moments, we're about to begin our live streaming service. So get your Bible, get your smart device, whatever you need as we get ready to enter into our worship service. Good morning, Mount Gilead. This morning's scripture comes from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31, the New International Version. Again, this morning's scripture comes from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31, the New International Version. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. Let us pray. God, we are so thankful and grateful. God, we are thankful that you woke us up this morning and started us, started us on our way. God, we're thankful for the air that we breathe and the food that we eat, and that we have a roof over our head. We are so thankful. We're grateful for your many blessings, known and unknown. Dear God, at this time, we ask a blessing on our Mount Gilead family and visitors who have tuned in. God, go into their homes right now. Bless their homes with love and peace. Father God, we ask a special blessing on our pastor. Give him a word today, Father God, so we may eat spiritually and live out what you want us to live. live, us, live let us live the way you want us to live. God, we just ask that if anyone is going through any problems or troubles, Father God, we know that you're a problem solver. We just ask that you go to their lives and let them know that everything will be all right. And these blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come again on this beautiful Sunday morning just to give you all the honor and all the praise. And God, I am grateful again to be able to stand before your people, God, and to speak your word. God, I pray, Lord, that you would continue to allow, allow your light to shine through me so that the world can see how wonderful and how great and how amazing a God you are. How you can use someone like me, God. Someone who is torn, someone who is a, a broken vessel, God. Someone who relies on you, God, and understands that um, he can't do anything without you. God, I am grateful and I'm thankful this morning, God, um, that you chose to use me, God, to be a spokesman for you. God, this morning I yield myself, God. I pray, God, right now that you would soften the hearts of your people. I ask, God, that you would open their ears, God, so that they can receive what you are saying to them. God, there may be someone out there who's listening this morning who was a sinner and don't know you because of the pardon of their sins. And God, I pray right now, God, that the Holy Spirit will move, God, through them. That they will hear clearly, God, that they need you in order to have an eternal life. These things I ask through your darling son, Jesus' name. And the body of Christ responded by saying, Amen, Amen. Well, come on and praise God this morning. It is another blessed day as always, I say. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. There is a word this morning and it comes from Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5 and I'll be beginning at verse one. This morning I'll be reading from the CSB translation. So if you have your Bibles, um, you'll find these words are something similar. It says, therefore, since we have been declared righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have also obtained access through him by faith and to this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also rejoice in our afflictions, because we know that affliction produces endurance. Endurance produces proven character, and proven character produces hope. This hope will not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. For while we were still helpless, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For rarely would someone die for a just person, though for a good person, perhaps someone might even dare to die. But God proves his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we have now been declared righteous by his blood, Will we be saved through him from wrath? For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, then how much more, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life? And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received this reconciliation. May the Lord have a blessing to the hearers and the doers of his holy word. This morning, just for a few moments, I want to speak from this thought. Joy that comes from our faith in Christ. Joy that comes from our faith in Christ. You know, brothers and sisters, as Christians, um, there are certain doctrinal truths we must all come to understand. You see, the understanding of Christianity is more than just knowing that we are saved and knowing that we are going to heaven. But brothers and sisters, as Christians, we need to understand the magnitude of blessings we have received through Jesus Christ. It is because of Christ this morning, brothers and sisters, that we can have joy in the midst of our sorrow. It is because of Christ that we are victorious in everything that we face. Brothers and sisters, it is because of Christ that we no longer have to worry about tomorrow because we have been given eternal life. 
Yes, in this text that we have before us, Paul wrote this letter to the Roman church and he wanted them to understand something about the joy that they had because of their faith in Jesus Christ. He has spent considerable time detailing in the previous chapters that man's need for salvation. He taught them that sinners who were without Christ, they remained under the wrath of God. Yes, he explained to them that nothing associated with their religion, nothing associated with works, nothing associated with the law or rituals could ever provide salvation to humanity. But we'll find here as we read on in chapter five that he told them that the only thing could bring mankind into a right relationship with God was their faith in Jesus Christ. Yes, brothers and sisters, when it came down to it, he was letting them know that there was nothing they could do on their own. It was nothing they can do as far as work. There was nothing they can do to earn favor with God. But it was only through their faith in Christ that they will receive eternal life and obtain the blessings that God had given them. Yes, after nailing down these doctrinal truths in the first four chapters, Paul moved on to discuss the doctrine of salvation. He begins by telling his readers the benefits of being saved by grace through faith. And in this passage, if we look closely at what he is trying to show us and what he was showing those in the early church, he wanted to reveal to them the joy they would have in knowing what Christ had done for them. Yes, I believe that God wants us to know this morning. He wants to reveal to us the joy that we should have in knowing what Christ has done for us. So the question on the floor this morning that we need to understand so that we can be reminded of the joy that we should have because of our faith in Christ is what has Christ done for us that should bring us joy? This morning, I want to remind you of several blessings, if you would, that we have received through Christ that should give us joy this morning. One of the blessings that we have received through Christ is found in verses 1 through 2 and 9 through 11. And that is we have received reconciliation through Christ. Listen to what he says here in verses 1 through 2 and 9 through 11. He says, therefore, since we have been declared righteous, how? By faith. What happens? We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. He says we have also obtained access through him by faith into this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Drop down to verse 9. He says, how much more then since we have been declared righteous by the blood? Will we be saved through him from his realm? For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled, here it is, to God through death of his son, then how much more having been reconciled will we be saved by his faith? After Paul explained about how Abraham's faith had made him righteous in the sight of God, he went on to explain how their faith in Christ had made them right with God. Notice this passive statement. The Bible says that they were declared righteous because of their faith in Christ. It was God that had made them righteous because of their faith, faith in Christ. We see this word justification. It means to be declared innocent of all charges. It, it, it means to, to, to move aside any guilt that was placed upon us. Justification means to be declared innocent of all charges justly brought against those who have sinned or who have fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible tells us that all have sinned and have fell short. Everyone have done something that was not right in the sight of God. All of us are sinners, but we have been justified because of our faith through Christ Jesus. 
You see, the Jews tried to become righteous by keeping certain customs. They, they tried to become righteous by keeping and fulfilling certain laws. They believed that they worked hard enough, they would find favor in the sight of God. And, and there are many people still today who are trying to find favor with God through their giving of money. They're trying to find favor with God by trying to come to church every Sunday thinking that pleases the Lord. They try to find favor with God by trying to do works. But no, none of that stuff can justify or make you justified with God. It only through Christ Jesus that we are justified. Romans 3 and 28 says, for we maintain that a person is justified, how? By faith apart from the works of the law. Yes, there, there was nothing they could do. The Jews, even though they were um, children of Abraham, Paul tells them that there was nothing they could do in order to find favor with God. It was only through their faith. In Jesus Christ that could reconcile them, that can bring them Back into a relationship with God. I read an article entitled Three Ways That Christianity Is Different From Other Religions. These three ways, they separated Christianity from the other religions. It said that every other religion teaches us to earn our way to God. It says that we receive God's favor because we believe in Christ. Going to church and reading the Bible and obeying God's word is not done because we have to, but it's done because we want to do it. It's done because we know what Christ has done for us. There's no other religion that has an empty tomb. If you go look for Muhammad, he's still in the grave. If you go look for the Buddha that they serve or whatever that they try to place on a platform, None of those other religions can point to a grave where a man has got up with all power in his hand. We follow a leader, brothers and sisters. We follow a God, brothers and sisters, who died and who has come back to life. All the other religious leaders are dead. Because we are justified. Because we are declared righteous by our faith in Christ alone. Paul he sheds to us some benefits of being made righteous. One of the benefits are we are no longer enemies of God. Listen again what he says in verse one. He says, since we have been declared righteous by faith, we have, here it is, peace with God. How? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace with God means we have been reconciled to him. There is no hostility between God and us. Reconciliation has brought us back in relationship with God. So you need to understand that the sin, uh, the penalty of sin that we were under, it was blocking us from having that relationship with God. But when Christ died on the cross and when we had given our lives to Christ, our faith in Christ, it reconciled us back to the Father. Romans 5, 10 through 11, it says, for if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son. How much more, he says, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have received reconciliation. The only reason we can boast this morning about our relationship with Christ is because of our faith in Jesus Christ. Paul says the benefit of being justified is that we are no longer enemies of God. But not only are we no longer enemies of God, but I notice this in verse two. He tells us that we now have direct access to, to God. The Jews, they never had direct access to God. They, they had to go through the priests. They had to go through the prophets. But when Jesus died on the cross, you know the story. The veil was broken to signify that everyone who believes in Christ can go to the Father for themselves. Hebrews 10, 19 through 20. It says, therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter into the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain, that is his body. Brothers and sisters, you can go to God anytime you want to. 
because of what Christ has done for us on that cross. Brothers and sisters, you don't have to call on the pastor to pray for you. Because just like I can talk to God, you have access. If you are a believer, because of your faith in Christ, you have access to God now. You can go to the Father and tell him what you want. You can go to the Father and tell him what your needs are. You can pour your heart out to God and the Father will listen to you. Paul shows us that we can find joy in our faith in Christ because we have been reconciled back to the Father. And through this reconciliation, we have been justified. And through this justification, we now have peace with God. And because we have peace with God, we now can go to the Father because through Christ, he has given us access to speak to the Father. Somebody ought to be shouting this morning because when you go and get down on your knees and pray to the Father, you know that he is listening to you. You know that he is hearing your prayer because of your faith in Christ Jesus. So we see this morning that we can find joy in our faith in Jesus Christ because of the reconciliation, because we've been reconciled back to God through Jesus Christ. But another blessing that I want you to see here that we have received through Christ is also identification. Not only have we been um, received reconciliation, but we also have received an identification. Listen to what he says in verse three through five. He says, and not only that, meaning the justification and the reconciliation, how we've been brought back into fellowship with Christ. He says, not only that, but we also rejoice in our afflictions. Why, Paul? Because we know that affliction produces endurance. And what else? And endurance produces proven character. And what else? And proven character produces hope. He says this hope, this hope in Christ, it will not disappoint us because God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. After he had explained to them how their joy is found in knowing how they have been reconciled to Christ. He taught them how their afflictions would identify them with Christ. The word affliction here, it, it means hard press. It, it speaks of trials. It, it speaks of tribulation. It speaks of dealing with the pressures of life. We know our Lord and Savior said in Matthew 5 and 12, he says, rejoice and be glad. Because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. James 1 and 2 reminds us to consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, that whenever you face trials of many kinds. Why did Paul say that afflictions would bring them joy? Because we know something about afflictions. Paul says, I understand something about my afflictions. I understand that my afflictions will work in my favor because my afflictions will help me to grow. Think about this for a moment. An athlete who trains in the off season, he has to go through an intense workout. Sometimes in that workout period on that off season, some of those guys may want to quit. They want to quit because the, 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 what they have to go through, it, it, it's rough, it's hard. The training, it, it beats up their body. It tears them down. And, and sometime along the way, they want to quit, but they continue to push because they know if they continue to push that when it's time to go for the season, their body will be conditioned. Their body will be stronger, even though they had to endure pain for a season in the long run, in the long haul, they'll be stronger in the end. That's why you can find joy this morning in your afflictions, because in your afflictions, you know that even though there's pain, even though they're struggling, even though there's hard time, you can find joy in your pain because you know that God is using your afflictions to help you grow and to become more like Christ. Paul shows us what happens. He doesn't leave us to understand afflictions, but he now elaborates on it. He says that he says that our afflictions produce something. It produces endurance. Endurance means it strengthens us to be able to endure other trials that comes our way. And not only does endurance, but he says that endurance produces a proven character. You want to see if someone is growing in Christ. Look at how they handle their afflictions. 
Look at how they handle themselves when they're going through trials and tribulation. When you are identified with Christ, you are able to push through whatever you're going through because you know that your trials and your tribulation are working out for your good. Proven character, brothers and sisters, is developed through endurance. And he says this proven character, it produces hope. Hope has to do with the feeling that some desire will be fulfilled. This hope will not disappoint us. This hope that he's talking about is everything that we have seen, we have received through our faith in Jesus Christ. He says this hope will not let us down. That's why we keep pushing. This hope will not fail us. That's why we have this joy this morning. This hope that we have in Jesus Christ will come to pass. Yes, brothers and sisters, there's a lot of stuff that we put our hope in that sometimes disappoint us. I know because I put my hope in people and people have disappointed me. I have put my hope in money. And boy, I can tell you money when it gets funny, it can disappoint you. Brothers and sisters, I put my hope in a job. I put my hope in a government and all those things disappointed me. But when I put my hope in the Lord, I know that God will come through. I know when I put my hope in God that everything that his word said, it will, it shall come to pass. Paul says your proven character produces hope. That's how you're able to stand even when it feels like the ground up under you is about to fall. That's how you're able to stand, even when it feels like the wind and the waves of your life that comes upon you want to tear you down because you know you have a hope that will come to pass. This hope that Paul said won't disappoint us. It's the hope of salvation. We push through each and every day that we get up because we know that our salvation in Christ will never fail us. In verse 5b, listen to what he says here. He says, because God love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. The reason why we know this hope will not fail us because of something that God has placed on the inside of us, which is called the Holy Spirit. God has poured out his Holy Spirit it is a sign to us that God is always with us. It is a sign that God has tabernacled with us. It is a sign that God is with us everywhere we go. We can have joy this morning in our faith in Christ because we know that his Holy Spirit is with us and we understand that everything we go through, it is identifying us with Christ. And so the joy that we receive from our faith in Christ it's because of the reconciliation. Not only is it the reconciliation that we find our joy in because of our faith in Jesus Christ, but it's also our identification. We are now identified as Christians because of what we go through. We're now identified as, as Christians because of who's on the inside of us. We're now identified as Christians because of how we respond to the afflictions that we go through. Paul says, we have reconciliation. We have identification. But the final blessing that we have received through Christ that can give us joy is restoration. Restoration. It's knowing how God has expressed his love for us through Christ. Listen at these words in verse 6 through 8. I want you to listen to it and let it sink in your mind this morning what Paul is telling us. He says, for while we were still helpless, meaning that we could not do nothing on our own. We was in a condition where we were on our way to hell and we could not save ourselves. He says, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. He says, for rarely would someone die for a just person. Though for a good person, perhaps someone might even dare to die. But God, he proves his own love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Paul said here, I don't want you to miss this, that God showed his love to the world, how much he loved us. But while we were 
in a situation that we could not get ourselves out of while we were sinners doing what we wanted to do. He said he sent his son to do a vicarious act on the cross. What do I mean by that? That should have been me on that cross. That should have been you on that cross. You should be dead, going to hell, but God loved you that much while you were yet in your sins. God loved me that much. Before I was even brought into this world, he had a plan for my life so that I could have salvation through Christ Jesus. Yes, we deserve to die, but Christ loved us just that much that he freely gave his life so that we could have eternal life. I don't know if there's any other joy that I can think of that I've received in this world. But when I think of the joy that I've received because of my faith in Jesus Christ, there's nothing else in this world that can bring me down. I understand now because of my faith in Christ, I have been reconciled back to God. No longer am I distant from God, but God is, is in fellowship with me and I'm in fellowship with him. No longer do I have to worry about tomorrow knowing what my life holds because his word tells me because of my faith in Christ, I can have joy in knowing that tomorrow is promised for me. Brothers and sisters, I know that I am identified with Christ because of my faith in Christ, even when I'm really cute, even when I'm, I'm troubled, even when afflictions come my way. Jesus was afflicted. Jesus had to go through some things. But these light afflictions that we are going through is to make us stronger. It's to make us, to, it's to make us look more like Christ. But finally, we see this restoration. This restoration of how God, he restored us. He was restoring us. He had a plan for us that while we were in our sins, he said Christ died for us. Well, I hope you enjoyed the message this morning and something has been said or done that has touched your heart that makes you want to grow more in the word of God. Hey, if you have not given your life to Christ, today is a great day to do so. All you have to do is repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord, I am a sinner. I am in need of a savior. Come into my life so that I may follow you. I believe, God, that you sent your son and that he died on the cross, but he has also risen from the dead. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, the Bible tells us that if you believe in your heart, and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead, then you are now saved. I want to encourage you to find yourself a local church. If you need a local church, I invite you to Mount Gilead, where we will make sure that you learn and grow in the Word of God. I want to continue to thank those who have been giving through our text to give. You have been truly a blessing to this ministry. If the Lord is leading you to give today, you can text the word GIVE to 225-224-7556. Also, if you know someone who would like to be connected to this broadcasting ministry, all you have to do is text the word LINK to 225-224-7556. If the Lord is leading your heart to join Mount Gilead, all you have to do is text the word JOIN to 225-224-7556. Hey, I want to remind you that Mount Gilligan Baptist Church is a place where we love God and others. We connect with the lost. But one thing for sure, we want you to grow in the Word of God. For this is a place where everybody is somebody.